Gamer Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Fournier, creator and editor-in-chief of MeTimeGamer.com. I hope everybody is doing well. Thank you for listening to the podcast. If you're new, welcome. Let's get started with new releases. Uh, for our first release, we have SpongeBob Hero Pants coming to Xbox 360, 3DS, and PS Vita. The next release is uh, Moon Chronicles Episode 2. 3 and 4 coming to 3DS. Uh, Criminal Girls Invite Only coming to PS Vita. And uh, also, uh, not too long ago, we had uh, Telltale Games announce, announce Game of Th- Throne Episode 2, The Lost Lords, coming uh, to PS4, PS3, Xbox One, Xbox 360, and PC. These are new releases for, uh, sorry, for next week, February 3rd. Uh, Game of Thrones is coming uh, February 3rd for PS4, PS3, and PC. Uh, February 4th for Xbox One and Xbox 360. Alright, so done with the new releases for now. Let's get started with This Week in News. News number, article number one. Life is Life is Strange, Dev Diary number two was released, named uh, Butterfly Effect. So in this one, we explore we get a uh, we explore what goes behind the rewind time power that Max has, and gets a better feeling that it's not just a drag and drop feature. So if you wanted, we got the article on the website. Uh, you can go check it. The, the, it's about a it's a nine minute video. You you guys can go watch. Uh, it's an interesting video that explains how what what went into um, creating basically the rewind because the main power of uh, Max and the of uh, in Life and Strange is she's able to rewind time. So when you guys the the game like I explained last time the game is uh, heavy on uh, decision making and if you're able if you don't like the decisions you make you are able to rewind time and change outcomes of certain events and all those stuff. Uh, so the guys, the guys that don't nod uh, entertainment, uh, went uh, uh, out in uh, Dev Diary number two and explained a lot on what goes in to uh, making the rewind feature. A um, couple of the highlights from uh, from the video was um, they said that the challenging part is is to figure out the rules behind the power, so the player doesn't have all the powers and be invincible to ca- uh, with the game. Uh, with that said, the rule must still make the puzzles and interaction fun and enjoyable. Uh, one little feature I enjoyed is that Max is actually able to remember conversations. So when you're playing, so when you're playing and you have a when when a conversation happens and you rewind, well, Max will still remember that conversation. Or when she, um, if you grab an item and she puts it in her bag, well, you, when you rewind, she keeps that item in the bag, which is actually a very nice feature. So yeah, I really, so the games the games coming out uh, tomorrow. Uh, I'm recording this on Thursday, 29th. So uh, on the uh, January 30th, the games coming out. You get episode one. So hopefully you guys are ex- as excited as me to try this game out. I, I really can't wait to try it. News article number two. Sony par- partners with Spotify to create a P- PlayStation Music to replace Music Unlimited. So, if you guys didn't hear the news, uh, Sony is ditching Music Unlimited, lim- limited, and they're uh, basically partnering up with Spotify to launch uh, PlayStation Music this spring in 41 markets. So, what's going to be nice is uh, 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 Spotify offers 30 million songs and 1.5 billion playlists on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 3 system. As well as this uh, will be available on Xperia smartphones and tablets, uh, users will be able to create a music collection and listen to playlists, including an existing existing playlist from current Spotify users, as well as Spotify uh, curated playlists, and enjoy the service of all Spotify supported devices. Additional, additionally. PS4 will be able to use Spotify while playing games, enable, enabling them to to soundtrack their gaming session with their favorite song songs playing in the background. Uh, Music Unlimited service will be will close in all 19 countries 
that it it's available in on March 29 to 2015 and uh, from if you do have Music Unlimited subscription from February 28 to 2015 Music Unlimited users will be with active subscription will receive up to 30 days of free access to Music Unlimited through through March 29th and will be offered an introductory Spotify premium trial so if you guys are using uh, Music Unlimited which is pretty limited right now well not limited but uh, it's not as not as uh, freeing as uh, Spotify and the PlayStation Music app will be, so you guys can check that when it comes out later this spring. Article news number three: Sony offers class action lawsuit settlement to PSN gamers. So, so the class action lawsuit against Sony for the 2011 security breach has been settled, and the result means that the PSN account holders in North America with an account made prior to May 15, 2011 will receive a compensation. Uh, for those comp- uh, these uh, compensation come in the form of uh, if uh, a, wallet re- a, wall- a wallet reimbursement for accounts that still have a balance but have not been used since January 13, 2011. If you choose this option, though, uh, that means you agree that to close your account in exchange for payment equal to the wallet. So if ever you, you haven't used your account since, which is would be quite surprising that you're playing you're playing video games without using your uh, PlayStation account. Uh, you, it will be closed if you accept that. So keep that in mind. Uh, participant in the Welcome Back program have the choice of one PS3 or PSP game from the following lists. For the PS3, you have Dead Nation, Infamous, Little Big Planet, Super Stardust, Super Stardust HD, Rain, Puppeteer. Invisible, Lost Kingdom, God of War HD. Uh, for the PSP, you have Little Big Planet, Mon Nature, Mon Nation Racer, Patapon 3, Killzone Liberation, Wipeout Pure, and Siphon Filter, Dark Mirror. Other options for Welcome Back participant include a choice of three teams from a list of th- from a list or three months of PlayStation Plus if they are not already subscribed to PlayStation Plus. Uh, for those that did not participate in the Welcome Back program, you have the option to choose two games from the previous list, or one game in three th- teams, or one game in the three months PlayStation subscription, or take six six months of PlayStation Plus subscription if you're not already if you're not already have a subscription. So if you guys um, if you guys had an account back during that time, uh, you just have to go fill out a form at PSN. Soe Settlement.com. So, if you're not sure the, uh, how it's written, it's P S N S O E S E T T L E M E N T dot com. And really, if if you if if you like I said, if you had an account prior to May uh, May 15, 2011, the only thing you need to fill out is your basic information: name, email, uh, your PlayStation account and all that stuff. Um, news article number four, fair, uh, games for go- games with goal for February were announced. Uh, Xbox One owners will get uh, iDARB from February 1st to February 28th, uh, and Xbox 360 owners will be able to get Brothers, A Tale of Two Sun from February 1st to the 15th. And from February 16th to 28th, you'll be able to get Sniper Elite V2. So if you guys got an Xbox One or Xbox 360 or both, uh, don't forget to download. And you have a, a a gold subscription. Don't forget to download the games, the free games. Uh, they sound pretty good, so why not try it? Uh, news article number five. There's a firmware update coming to Xbox One for the controller. Um... Basically, it balances a lot of stuff in the controller. Mostly, the the biggest uh, talking point about this is uh, that it reduces boot up time from four second to two second. So that's basically what you need to know about that one. News article number six. Um, this one's just a small little thing. Um, when PlayStation released a uh, 20th anniversary PS4s with uh, serial numbers on them and. Uh, 
the one that the first one that they serial the zero 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 one sold for uh, hundred and twenty four thousand uh, dollars over the internet this weekend uh, last week if, if I remember more so that that's pretty impressive for a console that just came out this month or last month if I remember and um, article news number seven this one's a little bit more sad for the gaming community uh, joystick uh, close will be closing after more than 10 years in the game gaming industry gaming news and indu- gaming news industry this is a decision made by AOL uh, because they wanted to cut back on their less profitable business that they own uh, to look back on joystick while well, joystick was founded in 2004 as part of the weblog network uh, which AOL acquired in 2005 along with its sister site like the tech focus and gadget it's always sad to see uh, another video game site, even like, even if it always seems that video game uh, websites always compete against each other. Well, it, it's sad to see them and one of them close because it's it's like I've heard in another podcast. It's always better to have more voices than have less voices because it's it's always more interesting getting multiple opinions than getting uh, fewer opinions. Um, so that's it for this week in news. Alright, so so on to what I'm playing. Well, I played a couple of games uh, this time around. Uh, I played uh, uh, Sunset Overdrive was Sunset Overdrive on Xbox One, which uh, was actually pretty fun. Uh, controls uh, I'm still getting used to because, like I said, I'm I'm new to Xbox, so it's uh, it's a bit weird trying to to, to g- jumping from PS4 to Xbox One. The controls are a bit different, and it seems to me that the 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 Xbox contro- controller is a bit bigger and chubbier, right? So it's it's a bit weirder, but it's still uh, uh, it's still fun to play. Uh, Sunset Override itself, it's super fun. There's a lot of stuff going on at once, and uh, it's just getting around the grinding and stuff like that. Just to get a handle of it, it's really important. So I enjoyed that. Then with PlayStation having a discount, I actually bought Just Cause 2. Uh, I was hearing the news about Just Cause 3 coming out, and I never heard of the series before, so I decided to go start at number 2, because that's the one that was available for, with the whole the definitive edition or something like that, was like $6, so I was like, why not? I gave it a try, I'm really enjoying it, I really enjoy using the, the grappling, uh, not the grappling hook, uh, yeah, the grappling hook, and um, just tying stuff together and making, like, first couple missions I was having problems but then when I figured out that I can uh, tie two things together I was immediately uh, strapping enemy cars to the pavement just watching them fly in the air is actually pretty cool to watch Um, uh, the last game I played I don't know why I wanted to start playing that one well I played it before I finished it before but I actually picked up uh, Fallout New Vegas Uh, that's a game I really enjoyed and it's of course, it's the last game from the Fallout from the Bethesda guys, the, the last Fallout game, which I hope they're going to be. You know, we're going to have more news from uh, soon for a new game. Um, the game that game still holds up; it's still really fun. But man, is it ever glitchy! There's a lot of glitch going on, especially when you have all the downloadable content downloaded. Uh, it bogs down a bit, but hey, it's still fun. I really like the. I like it more than the, the Fallout Three because it's. It has more color to it, which is really more fun, and the, anim- the enemies are pretty fun, and all that. Uh, that's all I played for so far this week. It's time for our Ping of the Week. If it's the first time listening, Ping of the Week basically is I choose a subject every week, and I uh, give give out my opinion and as best as I can, and, and then I ask you guys to write in and give your opinion on it. So this week, my subject is uh, remastered games. So if you guys kept up with the with your video game backlog, you know that when a new generation of console comes strolling in that you might not finish all your old generation games. Definitely what happened to me. As of lately, a truckload of popular games have come out as remastered or HD and gives you that chance to play your favorite ones on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, which is great, or is it? The real head scratcher in all of this comes at a point where the consumer has to ask him, him or herself if there's too many old games coming to the current console. 
Is this a, this is a valid question that many influential people in the gaming community have asked, or they've a been asked, and they all, their response are all over the, the map and on this subject. So are we tired of remastered games? Well, this question could be s seen in many perspectives, such as, if we take Last of Us, which was a highly su successful game when it came out in came out June tw uh, 2013, we saw that the game came out as a remastered and got people who didn't get the chance to play the game on PS3 to play it on the PlayStation 4. In this case, it worked out for the best. Remasters, remastered can present an opportunity for to new player of a certain console to get acquainted with popular games of the past and give other gamers a second chance at the game they might not thought about the first time around. That's that's great and all, but is it always a good idea to bring an old game out of retirement just to, for the heck of it? To answer that question, we must lo look at what's, what's done to the game to see if it's worth it. Let's take an example Final Fantasy VII. Granted, it, w it hasn't come out yet, but it, it's confirmed that it will be a port from the original version of the PlayStation 1. If you... If we were on the interwebs during the announcement, you saw you saw that this didn't go so well with Final Fantasy fan. Porting, game, porting a game and slapping an HD in the title doesn't make it an enhanced experience of the original version. It just looks like you're trying to make a quick book out of old properties. With that said, sometimes it, it could be a great idea to re-release games on a new console with updated graphics, new animation, and so on to give the gamers a real new update updated specimen of a great game. For this example, I will use Grand Theft Auto V that came out not too long ago on a new console and just brought the game to a whole, an, to another level. In this case, Rockstar even added a new first person mode which blew everybody away because it, it gave players something new and creative for that series. Here comes a big problem with re remastered games. How can I justify rebuying a game for another $70? That depends on you. If you're lucky, you might get a deal like the one I had when Last of Us on PlayStation 4 came out. My local video game dispensary gave me the game for $25 if I brought the PS3 version back. That's a deal, but the game was normally normally the price of a new game. To be honest, I would have never got uh, The Last of Us if the deal wasn't there. Can developers argue why paying full retail price is a good idea? I don't think so. Personally, I think HDified games should come out should come at a lower price because a good majority of people who buy these games probably already own the previous version. That's the feeling I get across the video game groups I follow. I think that the last point I would like to make in, is can we take a break from releasing these old and improved games? Yeah, we should because there's been too much of them lately and it's really making you wonder if there's stretch stretching their teams too thin and might have an impact on other games they could be pushing harder on or making sure they work. With the influx of remastered games, we have seen a tsunami of broken games. Something to think about. At the end of the day, the only thing we need to remember is is you need to put your money where your mouth is. Is because if you're if you don't dish out the bacon, developer will stop putting on out the remastered games. If you think about it, a lot of people complain about re-releases, but when they're a lot of if you think about it, a lot of people complain about re-releases, but when it's when their game comes out, they will be the first one in line to spend those hard-earned small ins to get a chance to replay their favorite game. I know I will. So that's it for the ping of the week, and concludes the show for this week. I'd like to start off by thanking uh, Technoax uh, Royalty Free Music for the intro and end song. Also, I'd like to thank This Week in New Intro from Mansardian and uh, Ping of the Week uh, intro song from Unfa. Both of these guys you can uh, see at freesound.org. Do you like the podcast and website? Well, help us out, make the site better by using our affiliate links. This week, where it's awesome, this week I got another affiliate link, a new affiliate link you can check out at uh, metimegamer.com forward slash affiliates. You can go try the Amazon links. So far, once again, we have for uh, states and Canada. Uh, G you can go to check out g2a.com, where they sell Steam uh, Steam codes, global codes uh, for for very cheap. So if you guys want want that going on, 
uh, playasia.com where you can find awesome Japanese games that we might not be able to find around here. Uh, we got a link. We got an affiliate link for UPlay Store and ThingGeek. ThingGeek has awesome products. I've tried them before. Uh, they give you anything geek related: uh, shirt, uh, t-shirts, um, uh, utensils, um, anything geeky. They probably have it. So go check that out. Our new one that we have this week is tfury.com. If you guys don't know tfury, it's a uh, uh, a t-shirt company they release uh, they they release a new t-shirt every day for 24 hours for $11 and designs vary from TV shows movies video games and reference anything like that pretty awesome and um, they 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 have ideas from all over the place from the uh, T-Fury community to in-house artists uh, if you, if you miss one of their if you miss one of their shirts well they got they got a gallery where you can buy their shirts for eighteen dollars, which is pretty awesome. So uh, go check that out, tfury.com. I've I buy a lot of shirts from them every once in a while, so I, they're always pretty cool. If you want to listen to podcasts, because uh, sometimes you just don't want a web browser open, you can check out on Stitcher. Yeah, you can also check us out on TuneIn. Uh, starting from well, right now, we also are on iTunes, and you can go check it out on Audio Mac. If you guys have any comments, suggestions, critiques, questions, topics for Ping of the Week, or anything else you can think of, send, a, send an email to podcast at metimegamer.com. If you'd like to place an ad on, on the podcast, please contact us at contact at metimegamer.com. Um, you can also read my articles at uh, gambitcom.com, where you can find news about games, movie, TVs, anime, and much more. You can follow MeTimeGamer.com on Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash MeTimeGamer. You can check us on Twitter at MeTimeGamer. You can uh, check us on YouTube. Just go to YouTube.com and to check in the search box MeTimeGamer. Uh, this weekend I actually set up also a, a Twitch account, so you guys can follow us at twitch.tv forward slash MeTimeGamer. Uh, I probably will be trying to uh, stream some... Uh, Sunset Overdrive again. Sunset Overdrive again this weekend. So if you guys are interested, come check that out. Uh, and that's it. Hopefully you guys have a good one. Hopefully you guys have some good games to play. Uh, check out the new games coming out this week. And uh, yeah, have a good one. See you next week.